What about it, y'all? Well, I'm in the shop just kind of piddling today and making some stuff for my hog trap, just some spare parts. But today's going to be a little bit different. i kind of been thinking about this, and I guess the Lord's been dealing with me on this, and I guess i kind of been fighting him and telling him I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just kind of... I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to just give my testimony today. Now, y'all don't be expecting, no. I was in jail and hooked on drugs and all of that because I, I, I was never that bad. But it was bad enough because I used, used to live in sin like everybody else. But I guess I really don't know exactly where to start. I mean, I was, I was raised in church. My parents went to church, took me and my brother to church. I was raised in church. My grandma, we went to the same church as my grandma. My other grandma went to a different church. But when I got out on my own, I kind of, I did that. I got out on my own. I turned my back on God and did my own thing. I got married, went in the military. I was in the Air Force for eight years. And I just kind of did, I guess, the military thing, you know, just drink and live however I wanted to. Mom and daddy wasn't around and I was grown. I did what I want to, so I did. That's exactly what I did. I did what I wanted to. And then we would get back in church and then we'd get out of church and back in church flip-flopping and and i got out of the military and i come home and it was like struggle 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 and we'd get back in church we'd start paying our tithes things get a little better then i think well this ain't so bad i'd get right back off doing my own thing and drinking and it just you know, and it just kind of snowballed. It just got worse and worse and worse. And then I guess finally, you know, I mean, I did some some really bad things and ended up getting divorced. And then I really got heavy into drinking. And just, you know, and I drank bad. That's, that's really all I wanted to do was, was just drink. I drank all the time till it got worse and worse and worse. And it was kind of amazing on really just how much I was drinking. Now, I never did nothing any worse than drinking, but now, if it was, if it fit in a cup, I'd drink it. It didn't matter what it was. It didn't matter if it was beer, moonshine, whiskey, whatever, I drank it all. <clears throat> of course, all growing up, you know, I'd get caught drinking and get in trouble and then I'd keep you know it just and it just kind of progressed and it ended up progressing to the to the point to where I liked it I wanted it I liked it I mean I never considered myself an alcoholic but when you drink and you don't and I'm not sitting here saying now that I was an alcoholic or whatever I mean some people said I was and I say I wasn't but it, neither here nor there it don't it don't matter I drank and I drank a lot I drank to the point to where it would make you make other mistakes, and then I, I got divorced, and you know that's what was rough on the kids, and then, the, and then even after that, I had one of my girls living with me, and I drank so bad that she was ready to move out. She didn't even want to be there with me because I drank so much. And then where I was working at, I guess no matter how much mom and daddy would preach to me or or what all would happen. I mean, there was times, you know, after after I was divorced, I'd be, I was sitting in a bar one night in a town and my grandmother had been passed away. And I really, I, I mean, I looked up to that woman, she could tell me whatever, and I would listen. When I wouldn't listen to nobody else, I'd listen to her. I was sitting in a bar one night by myself, I mean, there was people all around, but I was by myself. I was sitting up at the bar by myself drinking. And it's funny how the Lord will use things 
to get to you. And I, my grandmother had been dead. She had passed away a, a long time, several years at this time. And of course, she always called me Stanley Wayne. That's, that's my, my name. But she always used both my names every time she would talk to me. Stanley Wayne is, Stanley Wayne is. I was sitting in that bar and I heard it to the point I heard, all I heard was, Stanley Wayne, you know you ain't supposed to be in here. And I mean, it was so real that I turned and looked like I thought she was standing behind me. I went back to drinking. I was like, Lord, Stan, you got to slow down. You hear things. Then I heard it again. Stella Wayne, what'd I say? I looked and I walked out. Now, yeah, I drove. I shouldn't have, by no means, but I mean, that would pretty much sober somebody up when your grandmother's been passed away for I don't know how many years it was, but you could hear her in that room with you. Well, it was the good Lord using what he knew I would listen to, because evidently I wouldn't listen to him. I wouldn't listen to Mama. I wouldn't listen to Daddy. Well, then, my wife now, we started dating and all, and, and, she pretty much told me I wasn't going to drink if I was going to be with her. My daughter said that she wasn't going to be with me if I kept drinking. She was going to move out. Well, I was fixing to lose everything over alcohol. So I decided it was time. I'd have been a kid long enough. I done went acted crazy long enough, cussing and drinking and everything you could imagine. I, I done did that long enough. So I decided I was fixing to quit. I was fixing to straighten up and get back to the, to what was important. First thing being Jesus Christ and then family. Now, yes, I still make mistakes. I still have made mistakes and I still make mistakes now, but you know what? The good Lord forgives me every time I come to him and and pray and ask for forgiveness and ask for strength not to do that again. And he is faithful to do that. And now I got a, a wonderful wife that I had prayed for. My kids, I'm, I don't harp on them and hound them. I just kind of do like my dad has done me. Tell me the truth. Don't harp on it. But then live it right in front of me. And then you ain't got no choice but to see it constantly. And that's what I, I try to do. And it don't matter if it's my kids or cousins or nieces and nephews or my grandkids or who's ever kids. That's what I try to do in front of them. And now I have two step kids that I look at as my own kids and live an example in front of them, in front of my kids. Then me and my wife now, we we got two men together. That's mine and her kid together. I got my kids, she's got her kids, and then we got our kids. But then they all, and all are our kids. They're all my kids. They're all her kids. And we try to live by example in front of them. And whoever kids is around me, I try to lead as an example. And I try to live an example in front of adults. And there's other adults that I look at. But one thing that really shook me up, there was a man that I used to work with that really, really got my attention because the way I was living, and my daughter was living with me. I'd get my other daughter every other weekend. And he was talking to me at work one day, not where I work now, but where I used to work. I'm not going to call his name, but if he watches here, he'll know who he is. He told me, or said, I don't know, it doesn't matter. He said it, and I heard it loud and clear. One of the big reasons he got into church was because he was told that he would be held accountable for teaching his kids 
about God or not. That he would be held accountable for that. That's what the Bible said, you know, and I never I never knew that. I never thought about it that way. But yes, when your kids is young and you raising them, what you teach them is all they know. And God holds you accountable for the you raise your kids to love and trust and him and then become a Christian. And boy, that hit me hard because I was not, I was not doing that. That hit me hard. That was probably one of the biggest wake up calls I've had other than sitting in that bar that night and hearing my grandma. But, yes, I still make mistakes. I, I still fail. But, you know, what you do after you fail, when you fall, whether you get back up and keep trying or whether you stay down, that's that's the big point. Not, not the fact that you fail, because we all going to fail. It's what you do after you fall. And I heard that on Caleb. That defines who you are. So, I mean, I, I get up. I get up every day. Because I fail every day. But I don't fail like I used to fall. I don't drink no more. I think it's been probably, Lord, it's, it's hard to even imagine how long it's been since I've had a, a drink. With, I, I'm, I'm thinking this it's probably pushing 12 years or so since I've drank. And no, I don't want it anymore. When me and my wife was dating, was going to my cousin's house down in South Louisiana to Mardi Gras, and I had done quit drinking. Yeah, I was fresh. I just just quit. I mean, it ain't been long. And I was going down there to Mardi Gras, and I told her, I said, you know, it's going to be hard to eat them crawfish at my cousin's cooking without having a beer. She said, well, have you one? And I was man enough to admit it. And I told her I don't know how to count to one. I start over every time. One. One, one, and then it ends up one after the other until it's too far gone. And I done about lost them because of it. I wasn't doing it. And I went, and I realized on about my third or fourth plate of crawfish that I hadn't even thought about a beer. I've been drinking Diet Mountain Dew the whole time we was eating, and never it never fazed me one time. And it was the good Lord were taking it away from me, which is about the only way it was going to happen. Because I liked it. And that's what I wanted. And I wanted more of it. Every time I drank it, I wanted more of it. But now I don't even desire it. I don't I don't miss it. But it's, I can look around every day and see what I wouldn't have if I'd have hung on to that beer. And the good Lord has blessed me in so many ways. It is not even funny. And I am not deserving of any of it. I don't do no big, great, big anything for him. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't travel overseas. I don't do nothing. But we can all just do what our part at home. And that's what I try to do is try to do what he wants me to do right here. If he's got bigger and better things for me to do, that's then I hope I'm ready. I hope he has prepared me for that and hope he gives me the sense to see that that's what he wants me to do and then the sense to do what he's wanting me to do. Yes, I pray that this this little old YouTube thing that I'm trying to do, I've always said, Lord, bless it and get me subscribers and it's all for your glory. And I, and I mean that. And that's why I'm sitting in front of this right now telling my testimony is because it has been on me and on me and on me to do it. And this morning in church, there was a couple of things said about stepping out on faith, you know, because I was like, Lord, I, people's going to see this. Well, I guess that's what it's for, is for people to see, people to hear. There's somebody out there that is that needs to hear what I'm saying. And even though it's nothing other than where I've messed up and where I've come from and what I'm trying to be now, which is nothing extravagant at all. But I hope 
it does help somebody, and I hope I am doing what he's wanting me to do. And that's that's all I know to do. It's, it's what I'm believing in my heart that he that I think he wants me to do. So I hope whoever sees this, or whoever God is wanting to see this, sees this. It don't matter if it's just one person. And if I do lose subscribers because of this, well, I feel like the Lord will put other ones in there. But y'all have a blessed day. It's Sunday, and hope y'all went to church. And I hope the good Lord blesses each and every one of you. And I appreciate everything that, that y'all y'all watching my stuff. Y'all y'all keep subscribing. Share this video. Maybe maybe that's how the person is supposed to see it. It's going to be able to see it is by somebody sharing it. Maybe the one that's supposed to see it is not a subscriber. But I guarantee you one thing, and I don't know if I've said it on YouTube or, or what, but I know I've said it somewhere that anytime I put a video out, you can watch it with your kids. It's not going to be nothing ugly in it. It's not going to be no cussing in it. It's, it's not, not going to be anything that a kid can't watch. Now, I'm not going to put on there, yes, it's okay for kids when it asks me about this video because then that makes it work. Can't nobody comment or whatever. And, and I want you to comment. I want you to, to like it, share it, comment on it, subscribe to my channel, whatever. But I can promise you, if I'm recording somewhere when I'm at a hog trap or fishing or whatever and somebody on there is cussing and carrying on, it's not going to be put on YouTube, not on my channel. I mean, I just won't post that video. I may post something and tell you all of what happened and leave that part out. But it's not going to, you're not going to hear it. But because if a kid don't need to hear it, in my opinion, adults don't need to hear it either. So... That's just the way I feel. That's the way my channel's going to be. That's the way it's going to, I'm going to do it. And <clears throat> if I stay at 74 subscribers, well, okay, we'll stay at 74. We'll just, us, we'll just look at it all together and that'll be it from now on. But that's, that's fine. That's, that's fine with me. But y'all have a blessed day. I love y'all. I appreciate everything you do. And maybe it won't be too long. We'll be on here with the, some hog action and, it, it's coming. I got. I still got them same three people I'm waiting to hear on, and when they're ready, they'll haul at me, and we'll we'll get down in there, and we'll get in the mud and the slop and the stink, and <coughs> excuse me, and we'll have fun. At least I will. That's Daddy says that this is one thing that he he's glad that I found to do because I can be a grown kid in the mud. That's what I've always liked was the mud and the gunk and the swamp, and when I found out about pigs I, I loved it and then I started watching y'all y'all and ended up getting a trap and it's fun it's work but it's fun I enjoy it and it sure keeps my mind occupied that other other things that I could be doing that's not as good you know what I mean I get to have a good time I catch a bunch of pigs somebody's fixing to eat good I keep one every now and then to make sausage or pork chops out of it but a lot of people loves them i have people i got a couple of people i can call to take every one I, I get but i like to kind of share the wealth and or well, whatever it don't matter you know as long as they I, I don't think i have yet thrown one away every one that i've caught is somebody's eating it. it's got processed so but y'all have a y'all have a good day and maybe next time i'm on here we'll have some pigs and y'all share this video appreciate you